Oh, and a great big howdy do you to you and you. I <laughs> hope you folks are doing mighty good this evening. And hope you're ready for an extra good in this evening, because I got a special guest with me today who uh, I've been talking back and forth with for a pretty good spell. And let me tell you, she's got some stories that'll raise higher on places you'll have to ask forgiveness for. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our awesome sister, Miss Sally. Howdy, folks. How's everybody doing tonight? It looks like we got a good crowd in here tonight. Shoot, yeah, we got all kinds of good folks in here. Uh, well, I know one thing, like I said, you was talking about uh, a story right before we come on here and everything. You want to start with that and kind of explain a little bit about it first? Yeah, let me tell you something, uh, folks. I grew up in a small coal mining camp here in West Virginia, one of the first ones that started. Um, anyway, I had a cousin that lived close by and now this actually happened. Um, uh, she invited me to come and spend the night with her. Never been to her house before. And she told me walking up, she said, now our house is haunted. But even back then I didn't believe it unless I seen it for myself. I was always a skeptic. We go to her house, and when we get there, we're inside talking. Next thing I know, we hear knocking underneath the house in ses successions. Lord. And uh, I'm like, well, that's got to be one of your brothers or your sis one of your sisters doing that. And right. she, said, she said, Sally, there ain't no way getting underneath that house. Oh, and I God. said, well, let's go and look. You know, because that's just how I was. Right. And still am today. Well, we went out there and looked, and it was an old coal company house. And I looked, and that, as y'all all know, well, maybe some don't know, but those old coal company houses almost set directly on the ground. Oh, yeah. And, they, most of them just old clapboard houses, weren't it? Yeah. They... It was so cold in the winter because I grew up in one. It was so cold in the winter. It's hard to keep warm. This was a, only a, a one bedroom house. And I forgot how many youngins there were. But anyway, that was the first thing that happened. Next thing we know, we hear wind chimes out on the front porch. They had no wind chimes. Lord. And I thought maybe sound carried or something like that because it being in the mountains and i went out and looked and it, there ain't no way oh yeah um, what no way it come from right there on the front porch and there was no wind chimes at all and oh. uh then we heard the knocking again and we kind of shimmied up and went into the loft because we were too afraid to come back down you know we were just youngins oh yeah and we waited until her mama got home and her mama took us back and was showing us the scarf she got from Elvis Presley. Oh, and she, she was a young kid. She had been in a wheelchair. Um, I forgot how, but anyway, uh, he had gave, took off his scarf and gave it to her. Um, so she was showing us the picture, taking us around, talking about it and everything. And um, she told me, she pulled me aside. She said, now, if the youngest one comes running out of the bedroom late at night, don't think nothing about it. I'm like, after everything I've already heard, you're telling me this now. Right. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was late at night and there come the youngest one. She come running out of the bedroom and went into her mama's bed and uh next thing we know we hear a man laugh or a woman laughing and we hear a man starting to laugh too and we hear like you know those old spurs on the back of the boots way back when oh yeah i do ching ching like that's exactly how it sounded or a chain going across the railroad tracks because they live right next to the railroad tracks and uh, that's exactly how it sounded. It sounded like he was chasing her and they were just a laughing. Lord. And all at once, 
she had this one window that was broke out. There was no glass, no nothing there. And um, we heard breathing and somebody walking up towards the window. So we, we look out, you know, we right. were nuts. We look out. She wasn't as brave as I was, but we looked out. And as soon as it got up to us and we couldn't see nothing, there was nothing there, but we can hear it walking and breathing. Oh Lord. And it come in front of us, stopped, and that was it. Later on that night, I get woke up by something like, there was just something. I don't know what it was, but I woke up, turned over and looked at her because she was sleeping next to me, and I seen red eyes above her head. Lord have mercy. And I'm thinking, well, you're dreaming. Right. And I closed my eyes and opened them again. No, there was red eyes staring back at me. And I said, God said, you're not welcome here. Get out. And next thing I know, poof, it was gone. Oh, Lord. Daylight come and I want to go home. Right. <laughs> I can imagine. So I never went back and spent the night there. And to this day, it, it bugs me to go back. I don't, can't even hardly look over there without thinking. The house has since gone. Uh, they tore down a lot of the old coal company houses. There's still a few there. I'll try and get you some photos sometimes of how the area was. Oh, bless you. That'd be awesome. But uh, the mountain slid into where the property was. And I, to this day, I believe it was the property. I never thought it was the house. I always believe it was the property. And hey, Mary Mel may be. I mean, that, that makes sense, really, if you think about it. Yeah, because it wasn't really nothing but the red eyes inside the house. Everything was outside the house. Wow. Whew. And I can tell you this. I don't know how many stories you want me to hear, tell you tonight or how many stories everybody wants to hear tonight. As many as you want to tell, sister. <laughs> well, I can tell you they moved, was supposed to have moved, I should say, an old cemetery. You and I were discussing these things just before you started your life. Uh -huh. well, it used to be an old cemetery, not far from where I'm at now. Cause I got a new house sitting on some old property right now. Uh, but anyway, they were supposed to have moved the graves. There used to be an old cemetery there. And I remember when I was young, I had some relatives that took over the place. And there was so many young'uns, they couldn't all fit in that old uh, coal company house. So they had like this uh, camper bus thing out, out front. Right. And I was standing in there one day, and, sh and my cousin had walked out to do something, go over to the house to get snacks or something. We were helping our mama clean up both places. Right. And next thing I know, I hear the front door open, but the front door was already open. And I hear this man breathing and walking towards me while well, I took out that back door. And uh, I never went back there either. Oh, Lord. But there's all, all been all kinds of things happened on that property. Um, things like that, just a lot of noise, a lot of hollering when they'd be nobody there. Uh, but that was one incident that happened to me there, and that's why I never went back. Oh, I can imagine. So I don't blame you, be it. And the man, it was definitely a man, and he come walking through. And he stopped right there close to where I was at, but I didn't stick around any longer. I don't I blame took you. out I, that back door. I wasn't far from it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I just spoke to my feet and said, boys, make tracks. Uh, at first, I was in shock and couldn't move. You know, when you're young like that, now it fascinates me because the science part of it. But right, right. there's still some places that scared the pajibis out of me. And oh, I can imagine. One place is a um, um, 
cemetery down in Florida because, uh, as I told you, I went through a law enforcement field down there right. and uh, worked with a few paranormal groups. One was um, Florida Unknown. They're still going on today. And the other one is Lulu Paranormal. Uh, Mr. George Grover's over that, but Florida Unknown is Scott Dwyer. He um, he used to be part of the crime scene investigations unit down there. Uh, but anyway, this cemetery dates way back. It's a historical site now, but there's all, over 3,000 graves there. Half of them are unmarked, but I will tell you this, not even wildlife will cross that cemetery. And it makes every part of the hair on the back of your head stand straight up for whatever reason. But no wildlife, no nothing will cross that property. Yeah, you know, that's not what he's talking. You know, anytime you got uh, any kind of critters and, you know, insects and bugs, things like that, you know, anytime you got something like that that won't go around a place like that or you don't hear no, you know, no idly deads or anything like that, you know, something ain't right. Hey, the coyotes won't even go that far. They'll oh. go to the edge of the road and turn around and run back for the woods, but they will not cross over into that cemetery. So that says a lot right there. And That's absolutely uh, right. I had a whole list of things to talk about tonight, but I don't know how many stories y'all want to hear, but um when I used to live up there in the old holler, you told about the young man that we used to see. But I'll tell you one thing that happened to me. Right. We had this old dog we called uh, Duke. He was white with some black spots on him. I walk outside and old Duke is laying there by daddy's old truck. And what creeped me out so much about it was he had a big grin on his face. And um, I walked down the holler because I was real creeped out. And I was waiting on mom, walked down the holler, and there was Duke with mom. Oh, Lord. And it wasn't long after that, old Duke disappeared, and we never saw him again. Hey, Lord. But we had a lot of creepings going off at, in that house because it, it was an old coal company house. Uh, like I said, they were hard to keep warm back in those days. Uh, oh, yeah. we would hear, we would hear walking on the floors through the floors and mom would see like what appeared to be me primping in the mirror in the bedroom. She'd walk in there and it wouldn't be nobody there. Um, Good heard man. our names being, heard our names being called out and wouldn't be nobody there. And uh, I was sitting out on the back porch one day and I heard clapping and somebody walking up through the yard and nobody would be there. We would hear car, cars pull up, doors open and shut. And nobody would be there. Um, I found an old hat pin, you know, back in the old days, I believe it's 17 or 1800s how they. Uh, used to have the old hat pins the yeah. women did uh -huh. I found one out there buried in the yard uh, when me and mom were digging up uh, to plant a old magnolia tree I had found one if that I tells know. you folks anything there uh, across across the creek from my parents house there used to be a bottom with old coal company houses and there's bricks to this day that will go up through there with initials in it. Well, a young family was burned up in a house over in yonder. And we would hear sometimes noise from over in there. And we would smell smoke coming from over in there. And Lord there'd be Edward. nothing there. They're buried up on the hill not far from the house right now. And there used to be an old one-room schoolhouse over here. I'll be dog. All right, now uh, you said this is in uh, West Virginia? Yeah. That's what Way back in the mountains, you know. It's it's pretty far back in the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, I said, uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. I just wanted to make sure that way in case anybody else was wondering. Yeah, it's it's way back. It's one of the old coal company 
old coal company places. Um, the house that mom lives in right now, um, she she wanted me to kind of talk about it. Mom can't see, just so y'all know. She can hear a lot, but she don't see very good. She's had eye surgery, but she wanted me to talk about the house over through there. I told you this in an email. She was setting and uh, she would used to do the computer. She don't do it so much now because she doesn't see as good now. You know, her eyesight's right. leaving. Um, but she was sitting there doing something on the computer and looked up and it was pouring the rain. And she saw this man come by, no noise, no nothing. He walked up on the porch and mind you, it was pouring the rain. He did not have not near a drop of rain on him. No, no wet, no nothing anywhere. And she said she went to look and he just disappeared. And there was no footprint, no sound of him walking up on that porch. And if you'd walk up on that porch today, you'd hear it. But oh, there yeah. was nothing. And she said it wasn't nobody she recognized. Lord have mercy. And uh, I was sitting in the living room. Mind you, this was during the winter. Yeah, it definitely is a West Virginia accent. That's uh, that's a hillbilly for you. You got a few of them in here <laughs> watching right now. Uh, I was sitting in the living room. Now my gra my uncle passed away in this house. I believe I done said that. I was sitting in there in the living room. This was winter. All the doors were closed. No windows open. Of course, it was winter time. You didn't open up nothing in the winter. You know. Not up in these hollers. You know, uh, back, in, back in the day and everything, you know, uh, you didn't open nothing. You opened anything, you done it quick, and then you shut it back quick, and then you bundled up some more. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly how it's done here. Even if you got a newer house, that's how it's done. You don't open oh, yeah. up the doors for nothing. Not only that, you never know who might wander out of the hills or what might wander out of the hills up in here. Oh, yeah. I guess it just, you know, over the years, you know, doing it and things like that, you get kind of used to it. It just kind of burns into your blood, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's things you don't forget. Um, that's for dang sure. But I was sitting in the middle of that living room, and all at once this warm wind just come whirling through and right past me. And they always referred to it because my mom's side of the family being Native American. Um. You know, they always referred to it as phantom wind. I don't know if any yeah. of you folks have ever heard that expression or not, but that's what they called it, a phantom wind. And uh, I was always told if it's warm, then that's a family member coming through or somebody visiting you. There's a lot of scary places driving through West Virginia. There's, there's a movie called Wrong Turn. You definitely don't uh -huh. want to take a wrong turn in West Virginia. <laughs> yep. I, I've heard of many folks say that. Yeah. You don't want to get lost in these backwoods. You may not find it out, find your way back out. Uh, I'm not going to say County because, and Jared can understand this uh, just for safety reasons. Cause the work I've done in the past, Billy, I'm sorry. Um, Maybe Jared can say, uh, share it privately if he feels like it's um, okay to share that with you. But anyway, um, I rented a house when I was down there in Florida. And uh, I, I know it has nothing to do with uh, the mines or nothing. And I'm going to get to that, Mr. Donnie Laws, in a minute. I got a story about that, too. I rented this house down in Florida. I knew it was haunted as soon as I pulled up. I've always had this thing to where uh, I've seen or heard things, you know, I don't know if it's a gift or a curse. Uh, some say I'm a, what they call a sensitive. I don't even know what that means or understand that. Maybe somebody can explain it to me one day. 
Well, you know what I've heard uh, is uh, I ran a dis- Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You. I was going to say that there have been people say that it's sensitive. You know that uh, that just means that for some, you know, people sensitive to the paranormal and spirits, things like that. And uh, my awesome brother, my, Donnie, and they said uh, Donnie Law. I like said he's like that. Yeah, the spirits they just they attract to you when you're like that. You know, for some reason they something in your blood or you know just you know your ancestors or something like that. You know, but they'll draw to you sometimes my well my mom's whole family has been like that uh they've always been i don't know if it's the native american blood in them or what it is i i don't know because you know native americans are very spiritual people I don't know if it comes from that part of the family or what. And where I'm at, there was a lot of Cherokees. And, of course, back on the Raleigh County side of everything is where a lot of your Blackfoot was. Right. But um, my mom's side of the family has definitely got a lot of Native American. And that was my granddaughter that popped up on there. She's watching. Um, That's awesome. But I rented this house down in Florida, and I didn't know the history of it. There was no historian at the time, and uh, I found out two months after moving out from a sergeant what happened in that house, and I'll get to that in a minute. First day moving in, I had a roommate at the time, because down there you had to have a roommate or you didn't make it. it, and it's like that to this day. It's very expensive in Florida. But anyway, um, we were unpacking stuff and we we heard somebody come up the steps from the garage and the door opened and there's no way Crosswind could have opened up this door. Um, you just had to know the layout of the house. We right. we heard that door open and something walked up in the house and it was breathing. It walked up to, towards us and just stopped and we just kind of just stood there looking at each other, you know, and looking back over, didn't see a thing. And uh, we just kind of went on about our business. And we said, I told her, I said, you know, I told you it was haunted. I could tell when I pulled up. I said, but we'll just have to live with it for right now because it was the best we can do money-wise because I was still going through classes and so forth and so on. Right. And uh, later on that night, her mom was in the hospital. We had turned out all the lights before we left, and there was a light over top of the um, stove, and it was hard to click on. And it made a a noise, and it was very hard to turn and click on. Well, I clicked it on so we could see when we got back. And uh, just as we were getting ready to walk out the door, it, well, we heard a big old click and looked and the light was off. And uh, I went back in there and turned it back on. And same thing happened again. I said, well, we'll just leave it alone for right now. And we went right. and visited her mom. We come back and we had the blinds or the not the blinds, but the curtains closed at the time. Come back and those curtains were open. And this happened quite a bit. And uh, the next day, I was in the kitchen finishing unpacking while she was at work. Because we we work different shifts. And uh, I look up and I see what I believe to be was about a four or five year old little girl. She had on the prettiest little dress. And she was just uh, swinging it around. You know how they would twirl around and this and that and just watching me. And I spoke to her because it didn't frighten me. It didn't scare me at all. I, I actually, it broke my heart. Right. Yeah, you know, a lot of them will, especially when it comes to youngins and things like that, you know, even when I was in old cemeteries and things like that, graveyards, just yeah. seeing, you know, uh, one of a young and, you know, it just breaks your heart. Yeah, this, this really broke my heart. Prettiest little girl you ever saw. Um. But she was there twirling her dress and just watching and everything. And uh, my roommate gets back home and I was telling her, I said, well, we got a little girl in the house. 
and I was telling her what happened and we had also seen a woman through the window when we pull up one night and I told her I said now don't you get out of the car because she had seen her prior and it scared her plum to death and she's she come back through that house and she said well time for me to take a smoke break while we were putting stuff away and I walked out and I said well what happened this time and she said I seen a woman she looked like she's about maybe early 40s, late 30s. She had dark hair and everything. And um, it wasn't long after that, we pulled in after visiting her mom again at the hospital. And the curtains were open and I, we had closed them. The light in the kitchen was on. And there she sat right in the living room. And I told her, you may not want to get out of the car right now. I'll go ahead and park it. But if you want to wait out here a little bit, you can. But I am i don't care. I'm going to go on in. And she said, what did you see? What did you see? And <laughs> I told her, she said, Lordy mercy, I don't want to go in there. I said, yeah, it'll be all right. I don't feel threatened by her. And uh, we went in and I said, you know, I'm going to go take a shower here in just a few minutes. And I walked in the kitchen, walked back through and right there in front of the bathroom was this tall figure and it was all solid black. Sometimes when I would, a lot of times, not sometimes, a lot of times when I would see him, they'd be completely solid like they were you and me. Right. And, um, I don't know if that's a gift or a curse or what, but sometimes it can be a curse. Let me tell you, depending Lord on what you're I looking just, at. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Well, Lord knows either way. I didn't, I just still needed a new fresh pair of britches. Well, I just walked right on by and I sat down next to her and I told her, I said, well, I'll wait a little bit before I take a shower. And she said, what did you see? And <laughs> I told her and I, she said, Lord, don't leave me alone. I said, well, I got to go take a shower sometime. I said, you're welcome to stand in there close. I wouldn't mind it a bit. <laughs> but anyway, um, she had, she went in and she had been taking a shower one day and it turned ice cold in that bathroom. And she hollered and she said, do you have the heat on? And I said, yeah, it's warm where I am. And she come flying out of that bathroom. She said, it is ice cold in there. And I said, well, that's not a good sign. You need to stick close to me. And uh, anyway, um, we were laying in bed one night. She was sound asleep and I was asleep and I heard my name being called in my ear. And uh, that kind of roused me, you know, but it got. It also, it wasn't a threatening voice. It was a female's voice. I didn't feel threatened by it. Like I said, I always look at things scientifically. It, it fascinates me scientifically how they can do it and how yeah. everything works, you know. But um, two o'clock one morning, um, we were sitting in the living room because I had left a tape, a uh, digital tape recorder out. Cause like I said, I was with that paranormal group. I left a, a tape recorder out digital one, mind you, and wasn't one of the older ones. Right. And, uh, I said it out and I said, if anybody's got anything to say, you know, talk away, I'm going to leave this here. You get close to it and you just say whatever you want to. And you can hear doors open and shut and you can hear children laughing and them playing. And, you know, they had a, a curfew down there. I don't know if they, I, they still have a curfew down there. And this was way past curfew time. Anyway, we we just heard all kinds of stuff, children playing and everything else. And uh, two o'clock one morning, we heard this little girl laugh from what we call the pink room. And the reason we called it the pink room is because the walls were painted pink. Right. And we hear this little girl laughing. And we just kind of look at each other and look back. It was creepy. 
but at the same time, it broke our hearts because this little girl, you know, we could hear laughing. And uh, we would always hear footsteps come up behind us when we would be in the kitchen and everything. And uh, she had what's now an ex that came and visited her. I never liked him. And I won't get into the reasons why, but I just never liked him. Right. And uh, he came and visited one night. And he never came back which I was happy about, but what he saw in what we call the blue room, cause it was painted blue. He said he saw something that came just above the window and it was dark. It was, it looked like a, a, a child. And he said, it looked like maybe a nine, 10 year old boy is what it put him in mind of. He come out of there. He said, I'm never coming back here again. And I'm thinking, well, thank the Lord, because I don't like you anyway. <laughs> they worked out for the both of you, didn't huh? <laughs> I? There, there was a reason why I never liked him, and I, I won't get into it. But anyway, yeah, it worked out for the best. Uh -oh. <laughs> anyway, um, Sorry about that, folks. Had a little dog fight. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It happens when you got doggies. Uh, anyway, I've got one that I'm fostering right now, and she, she's been traumatized. Anyway, uh, getting back to the story, um, the, the day we had to leave, because I would always set out toys and stuff for the little girl. And uh, the day we had to leave, uh, we heard her crying. And uh, that really broke my heart. But, uh, yeah, that was one place. Two months later, I find out I had the group come up just before I moved out. And I said, Let, let's find out what's going on. And I sent you some of the recordings that we caught. We caught like 23 right. different EVPs out of that house and we I asked I said why are you still here and no it's ghosts I don't know about the one but the little girl and the woman were definitely ghosts and um but anyway um the little girl would ask for her mother she was calling for her mom because she was scared and I asked, why are you still here? And the woman says, shoot, kill. And, and now, there's a bail, folks. And I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I just had to I just had to say that. She uh she sent me, like I said, she sent me them and I was listening to them. And and it it, it was just I mean it, it was just crystal clear. Yeah. That that's what they you call what is that kind of haunting they call um it's not residual. It's uh, intelligent. Yeah. Uh, she was answering our questions. She was telling us why we were there. We did have a neighbor to break in while we were gone one day. And I told him, I said, if that crazy girl comes back, y'all scare the pants off of her and keep her out of here. <laughs> Cause she was a nutcase and I'm not judging anybody. I'm not judging. I'm telling the truth. She was definitely uh, that what she wasn't right, and sure enough, uh, she uh, got into the house while we were gone, and she said the door slammed on her and the curtains ripped open, and she took out of there like about out of you know what. And I said, I walked in and I thanked them, and I said thank you, <laughs> thank you kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate. I was more afraid of her than I was the ghost in the house. I, truthfully. Oh, I can imagine so. But uh, we found out uh, two months later that a man had caught the man had caught his wife cheating on him. Uh oh. And he not only shot and killed her, but killed the um, boyfriend. And the two kids before he turned the gun on himself. Oh, what a sad, sad incident. The little girl was uh, uh, 
four years old and he found her hiding in the closet in the what we called the pink bedroom. Right. And uh, Donnie was talking about the coal mines. And I remember uh, my daddy and them talking about they had to go back into one mine and they seen a coal miner walk out of the wall and into another. And he said that was enough to get them out of there. Lord. And he said it wasn't long after that there was an uh, incident that happened. And I said, well, Daddy, that was kind of like an omen, you know, like a coal miner, another coal miner to another warning. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people back in, they call it like a sign or a warning, and a lot of folks even call that as a, they call it a token. Yep. And, uh, oh, yeah, one thing, too, I wanted to add, uh, Donnie, if you're still watching, she says that uh, her daddy has some old reels and stuff like that. She's going to try to get to us. Yeah, Daddy's got some old reels of the, uh, it's it's a big history about the old mines up here where he retired from, Daddy did. And Dad was uh, a military man, too. He was special forces. He passed away in 2021. We laid him to rest the day before my birthday. Uh, from start. Thank you for your service. Agent Orange, uh, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, the... A lot of stuff goes off in the mines, and there's a old abandoned town that if you're really into paranormal, that's a place to go, and I'll tell y'all a little bit about it because there's still a working CSX railroad through there. Oh, uh, no. uh, most people probably already know it as Thurman, West Virginia. There was a mine explosion there that killed some people. Not only the miners, but it killed uh, some of the railroad workers. And uh, but anyway, um, they had this company that would drive uh, the workers around and meet up with the trains at different areas. And Thurman one night just happened to be where he had to go. He said, I'll never go back to Thurman, especially at nighttime. Lord. Uh, he went, uh, sorry folks. Oh, he yeah. went, uh, he went to, got a lot of wildlife around here right now. Probably the bear out there going to the Creek. Um, he pulled in there. He dropped some folks off. This is up in, uh, not far from Hinton, uh, Greenbrier County, West Virginia. And he, he pulled up in there and he said, I seen this man standing out in the yard and I, uh, and I waved at him and he never waved back. And he said, I heard growling. And he said, I looked and there was nothing around me. He oh. almost all the houses are empty up there. I think there's only one family up there now. But all of it was empty. There's a big, long history about Thurman. You know, there was a lot of fires, a lot of bad things happened up in Thurman besides all the deaths. There was a, a bank that caught on fire, burnt to the ground. There was an old hotel. Some of the houses are still standing and in perfect condition up in there. But it's now run, owned and run by the Parks Department. But the CSX Railroad still goes through there. I and mean, no. he said that man never responded and he couldn't see him clearly, but he, it was a man and he turned and walked back into a house, but the house was unoccupied. Oh, and um, that was one thing that happened. And I'll tell you, I used to work uh, security at night, uh, nighttime for, some of the mines and I'd be in some of the places where nothing were around but frogs. And if the frogs weren't chirping, this girl didn't get out to pee pee. Oh, I can imagine. So I, I wouldn't blame you a bit. Um, but, uh, the area I was took to my gosh, it was way up on top of this mountain in the middle of nowhere. And they wouldn't nothing around. 
And I found out later I had been sitting there, you know, all night. And when the frogs would chirp, I'd jump out and pee real quick and get back in. Uh, if they weren't chirping, my doors were locked and I stayed in. I don't blame you nary a bit. But uh, not that I wasn't real afraid or anything. It was just smart. Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't have a gun on me at the time. If I'd had a gun, I'd have been a little bit better. <laughs> at least it makes you feel a little better anyhow. Yeah, but I was in the company four by four and I left my gun in my car. And anyway, um, cause I couldn't get my car up there. It wasn't no way, but I was sitting there and I seen a man and you can see clear through him. He walked around the car and just disappeared. Lord. And uh, I, f I had found out later, nobody told me until much later, that there was a, a young man that was uh, murdered in that spot. Uh, it had something to do with a, a love triangle type deal. And uh, they snuck up on him and had murdered him up in there. I'll be dope. But you can see him just as plain as day. And they say they, that you can still see him to this day from time to time. Uh, his killers were caught, though, but they said he still remains. Sometimes trauma like that uh, stays in the earth or stays in the house. And I, I'm sorry about all the dogs. Oh, all right. They do, they're just doing, the, they're just well, doing their I think job. The, well, I think the bears out there, there's a bear that comes across. She's blind, but she comes out here to the creek. Everything's so dried up here. We need quite a bit of rain. But yeah, anyway. boy, I tell you what, it's been 115 degrees here the last couple of days. Are you still with us? Sally? Well, maybe she'll be back here in a minute. Might have just lost signal or something or other. Well, I hope you folks are having a good evening and enjoying this. And boy, I know I am. And uh, one thing I've been noticing in the chat here is a lot of you folks are grabbing each other up, showing each other love and support and everything. That's a blessing right there. That's a mighty big blessing, helping each other out. Have been helping, seeing a lot of folks. Uh, that Lord Stephen, you're already at 114. All right, brother. Good deal. Oh, no, wait. You're talking about the degree. I bet you're talking about temperature. But now, oh, Stephen just started his channel up not long ago and everything. He tells, uh, he tells some Appalachian stuff. And like I said, he's mighty good at it, too. This right here, in case you ever didn't catch that earlier, this is Robin. That's this is Donnie Law. This is Donnie's sister, and like I said she's got a mighty good channel, boy, mighty good channel. Like I said, so be sure and grab her up. I say so much, so history in these old mountains and hills and things. Like I said, a lot of it is, you know, it's, it's, it's right under her nose. You know, you just got to get out and look. No, brother. Uh, no joke, brother Jared. Same here in the borough. Got a storm again this afternoon. <clears throat> Lord, if it went through there, it'll probably be my way here in just a few minutes. Oh, you're very welcome, sister. But like I said, just I'm just telling you the truth. Like I said, I really enjoy your channel. Hope she's okay. Yeah, me too. I said, hopefully she just, maybe it's just her Wi-Fi cut out or something. I said, we all know how that is. Would you please put her link up? Uh, well, which link are you talking about, sister? <laughs> Janice said, been 106 here. Lord. I know she's talking about a bear. I hope she's Law CJ. 
Lord of mercy. You didn't have to do that. God bless you for that. Hey, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> Well, let me tell you what happened. I lost internet service. We got a storm actually moving in. Uh-oh. But I was going to tell you all about uh, a cemetery. When I was working uh, around the mines and stuff, doing security work, you know, I was telling you before we got started that the um, I'd done roving for the mines because of my background and everything. I'd go out to the top of mountains way out in the middle of nowhere and turn around on the edge of a cliff. And um, the couple of the weirdest things that happened to me, and I didn't get a chance to tell you this, one area I kept driving out to, there was a suitcase in the middle of nowhere. Well, I wasn't about to get out of the truck and check out that suitcase. Oh, I don't blame you, bit. Uh Not without a gun. Uh, but anyway, uh, went out through there a couple of times and it was st still standing the same way, closed, come back again, and it was wide open. Now, a wild animal could have done it or whatever, but I wasn't about to get out and inspect. There was no other vehicles out through there or had been out through there. I would have known it. Lord. Uh, but there was one cemetery that... and. This is the second cemetery, Jared, I was telling you about that ever creeped me out. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I roved all over those mountains. And uh, this is the only cemetery or the only part where I roved. One section of that cemetery always had fog in it of a night time you'd pull up there and it'd be fog and it's an old cemetery because uh it had rocks around the graves no headstones or nothing you know they used to do that like back in the 1600s early 1800s that's all it would be is rocks around the graves and uh but that every time i would rove up through there at night They'd be fog in that one area, just that one area. And that that's the only time a cemetery would creep me out. Those two cemeteries. And let me tell you, I used to, uh, when I used to do surveillance and stuff, had to, uh, I'd go to cemeteries that because it would be the most peaceful place. And nobody would pay any attention to you because, you know, they figure you'd be visiting kinfolk. Right. And it's peaceful because everybody's dying to get in there, you know. <laughs> right. And uh, if y'all think about it, a cemetery is a peaceful place. Oh, yeah. Uh, but not that one. Not those two, I should say. Um, the one down in Florida I was telling you about, not even nothing would creep across through there. There was uh, two young boys found murdered there. They were tied to a tree and murdered. And there's a gazebo there now. But uh, that place just really creeped me out. And I don't creep out easy because, right. you know, I've worked in places where there's been serial killers and stuff like that. Right. Well, you know, my experience, full, you know, that that definitely that would, you know, would, uh, you know, yeah, make, with you, my make you better with it. Yeah. With my experience, uh, not a lot phases me or creeps me out or scares me, you know, and, and I've had, you know, inmates ask me, aren't you afraid? I said, I'm more afraid of my mama and God than I am of anything. Right. And, Amen to that. But I told him, you know, it's like, I always say my mama always told me be more afraid of the living than the dead. Cause the dead can't hurt you, but the living can. Oh, yeah, that's what, you know, a lot of her law, the folks say that. Yeah, and now I had a, um, my ex-husband who has passed away since, uh, he was out hunting one morning, and he said this fog just rolled in all of a sudden. And he was up on the mountain, and he was sitting there, and he said, this hunter come across, he said, but what struck him was he didn't hear no footsteps, but he could see him just as solid as can be. 
and he hollered to him, he waved to let him know, you know, hey, I'm in the area, whatever. He never acknowledged. He just kept on walking. It really creeped him out. It made the hair stand up on him. And he said he he t kept hollering at him and all at once. He went around the tree and that was it. He didn't see him after that. Right. Lord have mercy. But there's a lot of old stories in these here hills and um I've seen a lot of things, especially doing paranormal work and working in places that I've worked in and doing the work I've done. I mean, yeah. I could some tales and it's not just tales. It's experiences, you know, of right. times well, we gone by. Well, I tell you, sis, like I said, I, we definitely need to get you back up here and tell some more. I've got a lot. Um, you know, um, especially working in in one part of the one of the prisons, we had these kids we called jits, and that's what they were. And anybody we referred to them as jits. They were in I block, and uh, I won't say what prison, you know, because I'm not allowed to do that. Right. But we used to tease the crap out of them. Uh just to keep them from being so rowdy because, you know, they were young and dumb. Uh, but there was a man that went in the back, back behind the cells, there were uh, pipes and stuff. And this inmate was allowed to go back in there, part of the work release or whatever, and work on the pipes. And he, we found him hung one day. He was dead. And you would see and hear him every now and then. And we used to tell the youngins that said, if you hear it, you know, that's him. And we'd go back in there and bang on those pipes. And those youngins would be up against those bars scared. <laughs> plum to death. We didn't have no problems out of them for the rest of the night, but you would hear and see him come through every once in a while. And, uh, just a lot of things, a lot of them committed suicide, you know, or they, there was a lot of homicides uh, on right. prison grounds. So you, you would, you would see and hear a lot. And uh, I was working in what they call a pod. And uh, I won't say where, can't say where. You know, I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, and I can't say which state. But anyway, I was working a pod. And I seen an inmate looking in the window at me. Oh, Lord. And I knew there wasn't no inmates out there because this was middle of the night. And he just turned and walked and disappeared right in front of me. But I had inmates from the West Virginia state prison in there. And they used to tell me some tales about that West Virginia state penitentiary and, uh, had one relative in there too. And he would tell me about how you could hear, uh, keys from like the guards or the officers, Hello. Uh, jingling and they'd be nobody there. They'd look out and be nobody there. Cause one thing about inmates, they always watched your every movement and they would time and do everything. Right. So, uh, anyway, um, they were always watching and they would look and they'd be nothing there. And they had what they call the sugar shock down in the bottom. Well, heck, not even the officers wanted to go down in that area because that's where a lot of things uh, took place. A lot of murders Lord. and a uh, lot of activity down in there. Let me tell you. Uh, anyone have any questions or anything? Yeah, folks, if you got any questions, like I said, feel free to ask away. Yeah, I can't. I won't release a whole lot. And Jared understands why. Oh, if he yeah. feels it's OK, he can sh share it privately. Um. I'm just kind of weary because I don't, um, uh, especially being out there, you know, 
Oh, yeah, you got to watch what you say sometimes, especially on, you know, like any kind of social medias and stuff. I don't want nothing to come back and bite me. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, like he said, you know, I, I I won't say who or or what it was or anything, but somebody sent me in a story uh, earlier today, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, we sat around jaw and stuff, and everything. I got to read it, and I said, you know, I said, I don't think I ought to tell that. And I said, now, it's a mighty good story. And boy, it's a good piece of Appalachian history. Boy, it is. I said, but I said, if I do, I said, my made quite a few people angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I told you about my daddy seeing that young woman down the road here. Well, I, I didn't get a chance to tell you, Jared. She's been seen by many men coming up through there at night that go to work at just there's only a couple mines still open around here and they try to come oh. through there at different times or come through there really fast. I'll be it, it, it turns them white, but we got this one holler that they call it the white holler because there's a woman in white always seen running down out of there. A screaming. Oh. Um, I've seen her come down through there in white, but not screaming. She just walks along the road. And I'll tell I'll tell y'all another story. I I knew this deputy. Uh, I've known him now for over 20 some years. He he used to be um he used to be over a police department. He was chief of police for a while. And uh yeah, I got a lot of stories about West Virginia and about up in here, but we might have to do it a different night to finish it out because I got way too many. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, there's this one road. He always heard stories about this woman. Well, they were coming through there one night, and there was this woman in the middle of the road. Guy hit his brakes and went right through her, and they get out and look, and there was nothing there. And uh, he didn't believe in ghosts, but he he was always superstitious and scared to death of stuff like that. And he, I told him, I said, you seen a ghost? And he said, no, I didn't. I said, yeah, you did. He said there was a car accident there a while back and a woman and her kids were killed in it. And he said, I swear to goodness, that looks like her. And I said, I guarantee it was her because oh. you hear stories like that all the time. Oh yeah, but he was—he never traveled that road again. No, I can imagine so. And you know, a lot of times, you know, when folks will tell you stories like this, you know, you know, back in the old days, a lot of folks wouldn't share a lot of them because they's afraid folks wouldn't believe them or just think they's crazy or you know think they's a little touched, you know. But well, I can tell you, um, uh, Florida unknown. The guy I was telling you about that was over the crime scene investigations unit. He's been featured on Body of Evidence quite a few times. It's a documentary about serial killers and and stuff like that. And he's been featured on there quite a few times. Right. Well, and, that's what I was gonna say, you know, you can, you know, you can you can you can look at somebody when they're telling you a story or you can just hear it in their voice that they're telling the truth. Yeah, that's why I always tell everybody, I don't care if you believe me or not, but that one house, my cousin's house really stuck out and has bothered me ever since I was a young. And now that one really bothered me. Um, the house that we used to live in. Yeah, it would spook me and stuff. We had an outhouse and, um, but I still went out there at night if I had to go, you know, but, uh, I, I wouldn't go to no outhouse at that house. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've heard our names called in the middle of the night asking for milk um, oh, me and my sister when we were young and she'd crawl up in bed with me scared plumb to death and I'd lay there and listen and I could hear my heart beating quite a bit uh, we just heard and seen a lot and I told you about the young man that you'd see from the waist up right and he was solid. There wasn't no see through in him when I saw him. He was solid. Yeah, and, you know, and that's pretty wild right there on its own. Yeah. Like and, 
just from the waist up and I, I saw him run past my window at night. And uh, I mean, just a lot of stories back here around these old mines and uh, some places I'd get out and some I wouldn't, but I, you know, as part of my job, sometimes I'd have to walk back in part of the mines to check on equipment, make sure nobody was hiding, trying to steal anything. Right. No, George, I wouldn't spend the night there. Thank you very <laughs> much. I don't. I would have to have about five or six bubbas walk in there with me. Uh, definitely would wouldn't walk back in that old cemetery. That's the one George and I went to, and he and I talk about it still to this day. Uh, it creeps me out. There was only two cemeteries, that being one, and the other one being where when I rode. And there is public access to that cemetery, but I, for the life of me, I don't know the name of it. It's not marked. I'll be done. Uh, it's not marked at all. It's well maintained by the coal company, but it's not marked. Oh. And that cemetery, absolutely, there would be fog in it every time you'd roll up. And uh, that was creepy. Not even the one that I went to where uh, a man was found murdered. That didn't creep me out. Um, actually, I was hoping to catch him and try and help him, you know, find out who his killers were. To this right. day, that's an unsolved one. And uh, but yeah, a lot of stories, Jared. I don't know where else to go. I've got too many of them rolling around in my head. Right. <laughs> well, we're coming up on our hour, so I guess we'll ha we'll call this in the evening. But folks, what do you think? I think I think we or we or we or get Sally back up here. What do you think? We'll come back up another time, tell some more stories. And I'm sorry, folks, about the dogs, and I'm sorry about being a little little nervous and stuff because I I don't normally do things like this and. I use the work I used to do. I was I'm electronic savvy that way, but not when it comes to YouTube and talking to a bunch of folks. So y'all yeah, forgive me. Yeah. But uh, my cousin's house, the one I was telling y'all about, it's since gone. The mountain has uh, came in on it, but that place is still active over there. But I tell you what, I would have to have a lot of company before I'd go back there, and then I'd think twice. But oh, I'd have to have a whole pack of chewing gum. <laughs> I'd have to have a whole pack of britches. Yeah, you ne definitely need that because I it's the property. Uh, but somebody had stated on there, and I'm sorry I forgot your name. Do you think it was Demon and... They always said if you heard knock in repetitions that that was a sign of a demon. And uh, I just remember her mama so proud of that scarf that and everything that was signed by Elvis. And what wasn't too long after that, you know, a few years after that, she committed suicide. And that family has had a lot of bad luck since moving out of that house. Um, I, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But I tell you what, I felt like a good cleansing after getting out of there. I can imagine so. And uh, I didn't. I never went back there. I I'd walk on the uh, way on the other side of the road, went and walk up the tracks back that past that house nothing um i there's something about that place other than what i seen they were just a heaviness like the house i rented in florida there was just a heaviness about it and i did forget to say this down in florida i told a friend of mine who was visiting with her three youngins i said whatever you do don't let the kids go in there by themselves don't let them go in there by no means by themselves always stick with them we both got to stick with them well she let her daughter go in there after me telling her that and her daughter come running out because she went in to use the bathroom she come running out she said mama 
I heard footsteps in there and I looked at her and I said, I told you, I told you, don't oh. ever let the kids go in there by themselves. You always accompany them. Whew, Lord of mercy. There was a young couple with a new newborn uh, that came up to look at the house and the daddy was with them. Um, and I told him right to their face, I said, this house is haunted. And the dad kind of laughed at me. I said, I don't care if you believe me or not, but I'm telling you two youngins, this house is haunted. They didn't take that house. I can imagine. So I wouldn't either. Mm -mm, nope. So somebody boy. gives you a warning <laughs> and they stand and look at you in the face like that, you know, and they're straightforward like that. You better believe what they're saying. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. That's for um, sure. Daddy shut up real quick. I'll put it that way. Uh, but, you know, I ha I've got that directness about me, too. So if I ever offend anybody because I'm direct or because I, I talk about God sometimes, you know, I am a reverend, too. But well, right here, sister, we love the Lord and everything else. So you feel free to talk about the Lord all you want. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm just a very direct to the point person i don't beat around the bush because i don't think life is very long sometimes life is too short and i was very direct and to the point i told them right to their face and they wouldn't even walk in and look at the house and after i told them that they left and never came back Lord uh, mercy. because i really didn't want them taking that baby in there right um, I was worried about that baby. Yeah, I it. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, I know one of them's kind of loud, but uh, I do have a bear that comes down. There's also a mountain lion that comes down from time to time when things are dried up on the hill, and uh, that's part of having dogs. Yep, sure enough. And they hear something, they got. They think they got to do their job. Well, yeah, and. The, like I said, the bear is blind as a bat. Bless her heart. She's been around here since she's been a tiny cub, and I tried to watch over her. But the mountain lion, he can have it. I'm staying in. Uh, walked out on him one night, never walked back out there at night again without a big old gun. I don't blame you a bit. <clears throat> he, Not a bit. He can have it. But anyway, that's probably what they're hearing is, is something coming down off the hill because it's so dry. Probably. But uh, I know I've been talking and yapping. I oh, know uh, you're fine, sister. You're fine. That's what we're here for. But if y'all want to hear any more, if you want to tune out and <coughs> and I tell some more later on, I'll be glad to because I got a long list of things. Yeah. Yeah, we've been on for about an hour, and we used to stay on about an hour, so I guess we'll end this in here. But, folks, we want to thank you so, so much for tuning in hanging out with us. I just us. seen a com comment, oh, Jared. Right. Didn't mean to interrupt you about the uh, West Virginia hitchhiker. Yeah, and I know about that story, and uh, that hitchhiker was found dead. Um, as a matter of fact, they've been finding a lot of bodies around here lately. And I think we got us a serial killer somewhere. Oh Lord, that ain't good. Yeah, we've been find they've been finding bodies along uh, main roads around here, but uh, that one dates way back. And I don't know if y'all know about the story about Mamie Thurman, but the uh, wrong people went to prison for her murder uh, because there was three bodies found close to that off of that same road, and. Uh, found dead in the same manner. Even after they went to prison, there was one before and after. So um, she's claimed to have been seen uh, time and time again. And uh, I'd love to get up there with somebody because you just don't go roaming around these hills by yourself at night or during the daytime. Heard I didn't that. But uh, he was referring, or she, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name in time. They were referring about the West Virginia hitchhiker in Charleston. And I remembered that it was a hitchhiker that was found brutally murdered. 
and oh, that murder still it remains unsolved to this day. I don't even know if they ever found out who the hitchhiker was. I don't know if they ever exhumed the body and done DNA testing or not. I don't think they did. No, they but, don't. But yeah, that that individual has been seen. They still have one body that was found. And that's the one that I believe they're talking about was the hitchhiker. It was an Asian male and they still haven't identified him. And it, this is going on. I think they can correct me if I'm wrong about 40, 50 years now. Lord. Still remains unsolved to this day. And he could be seen along the road quite often hitchhiking. Um, <laughs> Robin says, I'm always packing. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, my gun's being worked on right now. I got a shotgun that my daddy gave me that belonged to his mama. And I got a handgun. And uh, I don't miss my target. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. Well, folks, but as I hate to, I'm going to have to end it here. It's starting to storm here. And we all know when it storms here, my Wi-Fi cuts out. <laughs> that's what's happened. To, that's what happened to me earlier. And I'm sorry about that, folks. Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. Oh, but I got a lot of stories. Brother. I, I, I got a lot of stories, Jared. So if y'all want me to come back and tell some more about these old mines and these old mountains and maybe do a little bit of history, we'll do it. But Huge I'll get yeah. you. I'll get you and Donnie Laws. I'll try and see if those reels are salvageable to where they can turn them over to uh, DVDs or whatever and see if I can't get it to y'all. And y'all can kind of help me with it because I shoot. I'm trying to start my own YouTube channel on alternative cooking. And I don't oh, even know how yeah. to upload a photo in the community page yet. Well, that's all right. And like I said, I, well, I'll help you all I can, sister. Like I said, we'll get you help with you some subscribers. And well, Lord, we just, like I said, we're just a big old family here and we love helping one another. So like I said, as soon as you get it going, you just let us know. I will. But y'all, y'all can check out Florida Unknown's page. It's on Facebook. There's some videos and stuff like that. And Jared, I think I even sent you one video uh, where conducted uh, investigation in a funeral home. Yep. Yep, and you I could see the curtain. Good and too. You could see the curtain being pulled back, and nobody there. Yeah, and Donnie said, "God bless you, Sally." Yeah, because like I said, I guarantee you, I, I start saying, I'm pretty sure I speak for me and Donnie both when I say we'd love to see them or him or. Well, I can tell y'all the story and walk y'all through this old coal mining camp, but y'all have to help me because I don't know how to get that stuff uploaded like that, and y'all can help me tell the story and. Mr. Laws, I love your channel, I'll and I love you. this. <laughs> I love this channel too. And by crackies, I think I got you some more subscribers tonight. And uh, like you I said, said, the blessing. If you're down in uh, what they call Lulu, Florida, you need to look up George Grover with uh, Lulu Paranormal because he can take you to that old cemetery. You gotta be respectful though, because it is. Uh, it is a historical site now, and they do have a picture of the people who first started that old church. So, um, oh, but he yeah. can help you out and take you around to places. But uh, yeah, I do, Donnie. Uh, when when it ain't in the shop, uh, <laughs> up here you better have a shotgun, not a handgun. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, I'll walk you and Donnie through this place one day. Um, Lord, we'd love that. Just you and Donnie. You know, I don't feel comfortable oh, showing it God. to all of the folks, but um, right, right. Well, that way y'all can that see. Too. That way y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. We understand that too, absolutely. You better have one on your side and a great big one along uh, your arm there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, we thank you so much for tuning in, hanging out with us tonight. It's a blessing to have each and every one of you. And we just, we love you to death more than you probably will ever know. But, uh, and I hope, I hope y'all enjoyed, uh, hearing about my experiences. I've got a lot more. And I thank you, Jared, so much for having me on tonight. It's been a blessing well, so being able been a to, blessing to have you. Well, it's been a blessing to me. I was finally able to get, 
about that house off of my chest. You know, I've carried that with me and I, I was always afraid of being judged just like, uh, my friend with Florida unknown, they put him up on the stand one day, um, and jerked him around a bit because he was a paranormal investigator, tried to discredit him. In other right. words. Yeah. They bad about that, but no, here we don't judge here. We just a big old family and we're a big old supportive family. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you work the fields that I've worked and stuff, you, you oh, get yeah, weird. Make you look gun shy. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I'm, it, it was such a relief getting that off my, my chest about that house because it has bothered me since I've been a young. And Well, sister, I'm so glad we could do that for you. Oh, yeah. By the way, folks, uh, Cheryl with Courage, her uh, link is one that's paying for tonight and everything. And like I said, uh, she's getting mighty close. Uh, you know, she's she, we need to get her, you know, some more attention. Like I said, she's a mighty good channel, she's a wonderful person, human being. Like I said, got a big old heart and everything else. What does she do? It does some, uh, a lot of paranormal stuff. Does everything. she? Yeah, like I said, she does a lot of stuff. She's you know, she's real smart and she's learning too along the way and stuff, and everything, but she's also <laughs> real smart about it. So, grab her up and show her some love and support, folks. But, well, I'm uh, almost 56 years old, but uh, I've always been told uh, uh, I'm a lot older beyond my years. Don't even look at it, but I feel like I'm a lot older by, beyond my years. I, but I, I'd love to hook up and do some paranormal work with somebody because, like I said, this just ain't the area where you do it by yourself. Oh, ain't that? I can understand that, too. Well, folks, we sure appreciate you for coming in and hanging out with us. And, uh, Hey, buddy, how you doing, brother? But uh, thanks for coming in. Like I said, we're definitely going to have Miss Sally. We're going to have her back to come up and tell some more old stories and everything. And uh, like I said, just thank each and every one of us from the bottom of her heart. And Donnie, Donnie, thank you for being an awesome mountain brother and an inspiration to us all. I thank you all. And God bless you, Jared. And thank you so much for having me on tonight. You're very welcome, sister. We love you, folks. God bless you and your kin.